Okay, my friends, today, as you see, I got it up on the, uh, well, I guess you got it up on the 2 by 4s and I got to change the, you get the code of the 43 for quite a while in the, the knock sensor. So I got a new knock sensor, and I also got a new cable, because the other one, I remember when I looked at it to see to test a little bit that was pretty dried out. So um, I got some tools here, needless to say, to get in there. But I think uh, think all is going to go well. I'm really happy with these wood platforms for the front tires. It really brings it up, and I feel super safe. That's uh, one thing I've never really, really enjoyed about this. I love it when it sits slow and you're driving it, but boy... You can't get under it safely. You got you have to do something to be secure. And uh, this was not hard to get up, uh, to jack it up there, set it on the, on the wood, and it's solid. I mean, I can't move it. You'd think it's on the ground. So, all right, I, I'm going to go in there and show you what I'm working on, and then we'll go from there. Okay, my friends, there we are. I'm underneath the car, and you can see right there, there's the... There's the uh, actual, the knock sensor, and there's the plug just pretty rough. Uh, but it needs to be replaced, and today I'm going to replace it. So I got a bucket here to catch some water. I am not draining the water. I know you're supposed to drain the water out of the car, and then I have to mess with it, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. I want to fix all this. First, I want to fix the electrical. And then, so it's ready when I replace the new one in there that I can just plug it in and things will be fine. So we hope. Okay. We'll be back. Well, for those of you who haven't taken off one of your electrical sensors, what, how they do is they snap on. If you can look in there, you see the little clips. They will snap on here and here on each side. They will snap on the little white housing that's on the actual well, the, well, the sensor, in this case, the knock sensor, or it could be the water sensor, too, on the side. I I got another one that I have to work on. I'm going to change the cable on that, too, because that's getting pretty dry. They get dried out, and then they get so you touch them, and the plastic comes all apart. So it just snaps in there, and then when you squeeze it, you actually are pushed. When you squeeze it, let me see if I can show you that. When you squeeze it, they open up. That just a little bit opened up so you can get it out. See a little wiggle diggle? <laughs> okay. Well, I just thought I'd show you that in case you didn't know when you get in there so you don't bust one you don't want to. Okay. These are the tools that I got out to work with it. But this is the tool that actually broke it loose. Now, here's something that drives me crazy is that trying to find out what size socket you should have. Guys have taken it apart with 7 8 Guys have taken it apart with the 22 millimeter. Um, some... Uh, Corvette dealers in that say the 22 millimeters right size. I think the 22 and 7 eighths are so close, it's uh, ridiculous. But what makes a difference is instead of having all the little nubbies there to tighten it up, you know, to, to catch on to the nut itself and that of the knock sensor, you want something a little more solid where this is a deep, deep dish, but it is the shape of the actual what do they call it one two three four five six-sided that's what you want that makes a difference where to get in a six side this is heavy duty so you could really uh pound on it but six seconds six-sided socket not the uh this one almost i put this on first it got tight and then it started to slip because it just couldn't get the grip so i stopped before i had trouble and then got this one here and now we're rolling. Okay, that's the first step. We got loose. Didn't need this. I was ready for that. I didn't. I had to take this. Is the 11 millimeters taken off the little plate? This little plate right here that protects it. And nothing to that. That came off very easy. And I used just a regular little socket. This one would have worked seven eighths, but never get a chance to get in there. This is a breaker bar. If I needed, I could have used that. So that's it. Now. We'll see what the next step is here when I get it loose, and then uh, I'll bring you under the car with me. Okay, I think you got a shot at seeing <clears throat> the electric connection here. And you see where the, 
with an accent there is. And what we're going to do, I was able to take that wire from the new one and stick it right through, go, normally go inside the actual sensor. So now I'm just clamping it really tight. You can't quite see that. But you can see that's really wire held. Now I'm going to come back and try to solder it. And then I'm going to use this, uh, heat this and have it melt around it and hold that nice and solid. That's our next step pretty much for sure. But I got this in there secure. Once we solder it, it's going to be, it's, right now it's totally kick ass, but I think if I solder it, I don't have to worry about it at all. And then I shrink wrap it, then I'm ready to go. That'd be cool. All right. Okay, here's the old one. And you can see the top of this. The outside looks pretty good, but the very top of this is really corroded. Uh, I'm hoping that's uh, showing and identifying how why it didn't work well. See, because you wouldn't notice that so much here. It doesn't look too bad. And compared to some of them, they're completely corroded on the outside. This uh, just at the surface. But, of course, I think that's... Uh, where the test is coming from, where that ch checks it out to see that knock sensor. So, all right, well, we're going to replace the other ones in, but not torqued. Okay, let's take a minute here to look at, well, one of the important things I'm doing a knock sensor, or any other sensor for that matter, is keeping the torque at specs. Um, now, the torque for this knock sensor for me on the Corvette here is 14 pounds. <clears throat> no, most everybody should pick up a torque wrench at one time or another. If you're going to pick one up, you'll probably end up wanting to pick up one that you could tighten your bolts on your car, uh, all your lugs to get proper tightening, which is really important, as a matter of fact. So many people don't. They just, oof, as far as they can, and they don't really get it torqued to the torque pressure. And uh, you should, because they go 90 to 100, maybe 110 pounds, and sometimes big trucks, uh, a lot more, and you may need even bigger than this. But generally speaking, this is what most people will pick up, and certainly I, I would recommend you to do so if you don't already have one. Now, that sure ain't going to fit underneath there where the torque um, sensor is. There's no room in there to do that. But I do have another one, mimic about the same qu uh, quality and usage, it's just smaller and it's set at 14 pounds and that way I could get under there get the bowl on there and I actually had room to click it make sure it was tight and did that 14 pound test so I felt real good about it when it was 14 pound uh, that's what it's supposed to be not 19 not 20 not 25 it makes a difference if you have it too tight I can almost guarantee you you're going to have a problem because it's going to sense things that are not there and that's pretty much the, the deal now you can take a regular wrench and go with that old <laughs> one of the guys said to me he says uh, all i did for my torque <clears throat> my knock sensor is i tightened it up and then i went Ugh! gave a little bit more of a jerk well that's not the way i'm going to do it now here's another thing i didn't use it today but it, it can be used on occasion this is a digital and this allows you to be able to use this to get exact um, torque that you have on it. And you can set this just like you would a torque wrench and it beeps and lights up and uh, works really well. There wasn't room even for this in there. I might have used it uh, with the socket and with the wrench itself, <clears throat> you couldn't really get it. But the nice thing about it is you can use any wrench with it. You don't have to have a crescent wrench on top or a uh, um, torque wrench on top of it. So that works great. And it fits in this nice little container. So I have this set aside. You know, you don't use them often, but when you do, they're the right thing. They are what to have. So hopefully that helps. I hope that was uh, gave you a couple of insights of what I use and have in my arsenal of tools. Okay, we're in the car, as you can see. Uh, I'm about to start it up. I want to make sure there's no codes. Let me uh, lower the, the steering wheel here. And let's get rid of that 43. That's what we want for sure. Okay, here we go. Cold start. Look at that. No codes. None. Well, I didn't want any codes, but uh, any other codes either. But there we go. That's awesome. 
<laughs> we would call that success, you know. Of course, it's idling really good right now. It is cold right now, too. It's, uh, I think the temperature is like 50 or 48, I think, when I came out here. So it's not, not a real warm day to be today, but man, the cold is gone. Car's running good. Happy guy. So was it, was it a big, hard project? Ah, I didn't think it was too bad. It went along really smooth, and um, that's important. You know, I mean, you kind of have to figure out what you're going to do. If you're going to own one of these cars, that's one of the things you want for sure to understand that you're going to be doing some repairs. I mean, this car is almost 40 years old, so uh, is it in good shape? It's in excellent shape, but not by <laughs> not by automatic. It's uh, you have to keep on top of it when things go haywire because you know that's just the way it is in any old car, not not necessarily a Corvette. Okay. Well, thanks for coming along with the ride on this way, I, I appreciate it, and we'll look forward to seeing you on the next one. All right. No code. No reflection here. Can't tell. No code. <laughs>